Hey everybody! Welcome to another episode of Classic Gaming Brothers. I'm Zach. And I'm Seth. And we're the Classic Gaming Brothers. That's right. We are still, uh, what is it? We're uh, always classic, sometimes classy. Always classy, sometimes classic, sometimes classy, no, sometimes... S- I said it backwards, didn't I? <laughs> you did say it backwards. <laughs> It makes it better. It doesn't make it better. <laughs> it makes it a we're, little better. We're, we're not always classy, though. No, we're rarely classy. Very rarely classy. What what if we say? Oh, if we go to a Broadway play, though, maybe we'll be classy. If we went to a if we went to a fancy restaurant, a Broadway play, or if we went to go test drive a really nice car, I'm talking Ooh. about like a Bugatti or something like that, would probably be a little classy then. Who who would let us test drive a really fancy car like that? No one. Well, <laughs> oh, if we, we dress nice, <laughs> if we <laughs> looked rich, uh, that's all you got to do is look rich. I, um, I guess in yeah, life, yeah. Uh, anyway, <laughs> Seth, what have you been playing? Jeez, we're not even gonna say welcome back to another episode. I already did. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, anyway, uh, <laughs> so recently I've been uh, playing. Actually, I just recently beat uh, a game called Broken Sword Shadows Over the Templars. I just ah. <laughs> I, I just put down the number one in my notes. You did. <laughs> so I'm pretty sure it's Shadows Over Shadows of the Templars. Shadows of the Templars. Over the shadows Templars the would Templars. be weird. <laughs> the, the shadows over the Templars. Um, <laughs> They're in caves. <laughs> so <laughs> this game is, is created by uh, a company called revolution uh it's uh, charles cecil is the uh main driving force behind the company and they've made a lot of broken swords uh they have in fact five of them and they have been releasing them since the dawn of time and by that i mean uh 1996 is when the uh the first Broken Sword, The Shadow of the Templars, was released. Uh, they made two games before, Lure of Temper- Temptress and Beneath a Steel Sky. Lure of the Temptress was free on GOG. It may still be free. It is, I think, still free. And Beneath a Steel Sky was also free for a period yes, of time because it, I have that as well. <laughs> that one is actually going to get remastered. Ooh. Or getting No, it's getting a sequel. It's doing something. Oh, they're... No, they already released the remastered version and they're going to make a sequel so charles has made a lot of broken swords uh the to get into the series of the game of what it was it's a it's an adventure story an adventure game that uh centers around uh, two people uh george stobart and uh nicole collard uh or nico um George is a American patent lawyer who is vacationing in Paris or Paris. And Nicole Collard is a photojournalist who is uh, native to Paris. And she is Parisian. While George is out at a cafe, uh, the cafe blows up. They kind of cross paths, George and Nicole, and they work together in solving this bombing, murder, and adventure. And they go on a globe-trotting adventure uh, in a very, very traditional adventure game where you need to combine inventory pieces to, to solve puzzles. So you have to collect things that may not be necessarily something that you would normally collect in real life, such as duct tape or pieces of it after it's fallen off of something. So trash, you would pick this trash up and you would then combine it with um, something else. An example of one of the wonderful combinations that you can do in the game is you you pick up some grease uh you pick up a tissue that was used <laughs> to wipe off somebody's grease paint and you carry it with you for a majority of the game to eventually use it to rub off on a plaster statue to make it look in Syria so the game starts off in Paris oh. but you have to, you go eventually to Syria okay. you get okay. a plaster statue from a merchant you rub the grease paint off on the merch on the statue the plaster statue to make it look like a, a like a marble figure that you then sell to a, another american for $50 to be able to buy a taxi ride and wow. that's broken sword <laughs> Oh. That's I, I, I'm just impressed that he managed to keep a greasy rag in his pocket 
over the course of what I assume <laughs> is many real life hours, if yes. not days. Uh, he in fact uses the greasy rag again at the end of the game to light a. F- he puts it at the end of a stick to carry a flame to a very high location. You, in fact, one of the most Brilliant. used items in the game is the tissue that has grease paint on it, dropped from like a clown. I would expect it to like dry at some point, but apparently yeah, that no. grease paint is that, that's good some good for, grease paint. It's good. It's good forever. So yeah, it's a it's a fun game. It's a good adventure game. I'm planning on going through the entire series uh, since. So in the original game, I don't know if in the remastered game you can die in the game. Oh. Um, which is not common for an adventure game. And I think I he died in the first or second one when I originally played through it or tried mm-hmm. to play through it and got frustrated because I wasn't expecting to die and there was no saved game for a long time because it's one of those like you have to manually save because the game will not save for you Yeah, kind of game. So I already progressed far in the game. Then I randomly died and decided that I was done with it. And that was a while ago. So now I'm trying to go through it again. And I've been told that the remastered version, they took out you getting killed in it. So I'm on the sec- I'm on the second one, the remastered version. But oh, okay. I will um, I will probably not talk about it again until maybe the fifth one. But assuming I get there. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's a great it, it's a great solid um, adventure series. Uh, came out similarly timed uh, with the Gabriel Knight series. Okay. Uh, which very at least the Gabriel Knight series and this series at least the first one and the third gabriel knight series have similar tie-ins with the templars and like um the order of the templars and their secret treasures and stuff like that which is interesting and if you like that kind of like mythos then you would probably like broken sword and you probably like the gabriel knight series uh gabriel knight one though is about voodoo murders so oh yeah both both fun. of those games are very very good, very fun adventure games. More serious, as I was recently, uh, I made fun of for enjoying serious adventure games versus silly, uh, adventure, games. silly adventure games like Mani- uh, Mani- Maniac Mansion and uh, Day of the Tentacle and uh, Leisure Suit Larry, Leisure Suit Larry and Monkey Island. So both of them are great. Uh, both styles of adventure games are fun. Broken Sword is definitely of the more serious variety, except for the whole part of being able to bring grease paint further along. Uh, the game is also all hand-drawn and has some full voice acting throughout the whole thing. And it's just a really uh, great experience of uh, an, um, a hand-drawn adventure game. Cool. Uh, so, uh, Zach, what have you been recently been playing? Well, you should know what I've recently been playing because you've been recently playing it too. And oh. that is The Forest. It's a fun game. It is a fun game. So Seth and I have recently been playing The Forest along with uh, Don't Starve together. We Survive Together. We Survive Together, uh, Ryan. Don't Starve is a different game. It is uh, a different game. <laughs> uh, along with We Survive Together, Ryan. Uh, it's been a great time. I personally really enjoy the game. For anyone who's never played it, it's a... Uh, first-person perspective survival horror game about a group of people who crash land on an island and you go looking for your son timmy apparently yes at least one of you is looking for their son yes someone's looking for timmy it so far i've been having a great time with it it's it's very cool Uh, just some fun facts about it is that uh the game was in early access for a very long time apparently yes forever Um, about i think it was about like four or five years four years or so it was officially released in april of 2018 for microsoft windows and for playstation 4 and there is a sequel that is in development called Sons what? of the Forest, which is a very silly name for a, for a sequel, but it is apparently in development. Oh, sequel. I didn't even know yeah. there was a sequel to it. And another fun fact, apparently the team that worked on it uh, had their start in film and worked on The Amazing Spider-Man 2 and Tron Legacy. Oh, nice. Yeah. Both both of those games are okay. Movies. Oh, the movies. Yeah, they made the well, movies. I mean, there is a there is also a Tron game and also a Spider Man game. There are. They worked on the movies though. Oh, okay. <laughs> and apparently the initial budget for the game was one hundred and twenty five thousand dollars. Wow, for the forest. Yeah. 
it was in was. early access forever it was I um, owned so, it in early access. Uh, but so far, I'm enjoying it. So yeah, you pretty much survive on this island. Seth talked about it a bit in our horror episode. You survive on an island with people, and you have to fight cannibals and creepy monsters that live in caves. Um, and they are very creepy monsters. They are less creepy with people, though, as Seth, I think, pointed out. Yes, it's it's a, it's a much different... We actually had um, one of our uh, friends, uh, one of our friends uh, join us. Uh, during the f- our last playthrough, or one of our playthroughs, yeah, and uh, he said that he when he plays the game alone, it's very different than when you play it with a bunch of people. I feel like it's humorous when you play it with a bunch of people, and yeah. it is horrifying when you play it by yourself. Yeah. Um. So if you want to check out us playing the forest, we've been playing it um fairly often um and you can check us out on our twitch classic gaming brothers and you can also check us check me out on my stream at versus classic gaming brothers so quick little plug of our twitch before we get into the meat of our section yep and if you have the forest and want to play it with us uh we can get up to eight people in our game so i don't care yeah we'll have a whole party of people yeah yeah whatever as long as you don't destroy our base i'll be knowing seth will make you cut down wood or rather do the glitch where you just you can continually generate wood from yeah. nowhere i'll either bark at orders at you or uh complain that i'm hungry the entire game it's yeah. it's an enjoyable experience for anybody who's playing it with me it's, it's been very entertaining uh zach um, will dance in it i will dance um and occasionally my game will glitch which will make me drink everything <laughs> yes including the bodies including the bodies the food the fire the birds <laughs> it's and <bad>. dirt <laughs> i hope that's fixed next time we play i hope it's not going into today's uh meat of the podcast we're going to be talking about sports games yes which i will say for two young men probably the closest we ever got to sports in real life (laughs) i i actually uh i wanted to send out an apology to uh the sports genre because there are a lot of sports games out there There and there are a lot of (laughs) classic sports games out there oh yes and this may be the only episode that we will talk about them we for the reason being these are the only sports games we played (laughs) (laughs) i've i've played um trying to think other sports games apart from like the nascar games you played i played nascar games the cruising games not the cruising games. Didn't you play some car games with uh, Matt? The cruising games? No, the wrestling games. That's what I'm thinking of. Oh, the wrestling games. Yeah. I also played car racing games, but they were not. Anyway, we're gonna t- let's talk about sports. Sports, 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 sports. sports, sports. Um. <laughs> so we're gonna we're gonna go through. We'll just do some uh, kind of. I we have a few games that we are going to talk about. We're going to talk about one for a lot. And then uh, the other ones we're going to talk about for a little, because one is is the grandpappy of games, so we can That's save right. that one for the towards the end. Um, at least in our opinion, is the uh, is the 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 best. Um, yeah, it's th- still the only sports game I play. Yeah, <laughs> so like regularly. <laughs> one of, one of the first introductions to a uh, to the sports games was through uh, a friend that I grew up a, going like a grammar school friend um, by the name of Charles. When I would go to his house, uh, they his family was very into uh, hockey, so he had a hockey Sega game. And also, he had Street Fighter, which is one of the first places that I played Street Fighter Two Turbo. Yeah, so he played, they had Street Fighter and he also had NHL 95, Ooh. which came out in 1994 and was uh, created by Electronic Arts, uh, specifically the Canada division. It is a SNES, Sega Genesis, or Mega Drive uh, release of the game where you play in the, uh, you play a hockey, hockey games in the yeah. NHL. It sums it up. Do you have any uh, memories of this game, Zach? I remember punching people in that game. Not in real That's life. That's what I remember. <laughs> but you could get in fights in that game. Just yes. like the real NHL, punching was allowed and sometimes encouraged. <laughs> yes. So the best part about this game, I feel like, was the violence that came with it. And I wasn't really good at getting it my... So I wasn't really good at getting the puck into the goal, which I've been told is mm. something you have to do in hockey. 
Yeah, I was instead very good with getting into fights with other people on the other team, getting everybody sent to the penalty box. The which best is, thing to do. That's what pretty much my strategy was, was to beat everybody else up on the team so that they had nobody to field before I could get everybody into the penalty box. I remember... It sounds like a valid way to play hockey, to be honest. I mean, yeah. If yeah, the Bruins I, did that, it would just be another game. <laughs> It's 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 true. The I, I feel like part of the the game. I I my best memory of that game was seeing like being able to only field like three people because in, in in this game and probably in real hockey, uh, you have to have field so many people onto the ring. Yeah. Yeah, and if you have somebody in the penalty box, you cannot field a sub because right. they have to fill, sit out in the penalty box. So there was a time that I would collect like four or five people in the penalty box, leading me to field two people or three people. Because I think it was like seven, I think, or yeah. something like that. Um, so I'd have like two people that I'd be able to play against my Charles's team of like five or six. Because sometimes his people would get into fights with me and then he would have to go to the penalty box. Game Pro uh, gave the Genesis version a perfect score, calling it the most smoothest, most entertaining hockey title ever created. And had the game had the ability to sign, trade, release real NHL players at the time, the ability oh, yeah, to yeah. create your own fantasy players. There was advanced statistics, new injury animations, and realistic sounds. And the game played very fast. Mm. Uh, the NES version was average because of the uh, removal of certain content that was also uh, that was on the Genesis version, as well as uh, inferior controls on the NES, NES controller versus the the Genesis version. Um, but yeah, so that's NHL '95. Yeah, that um, was a, I will say that it definitely game. it definitely was a fast game. I mean, that's one of the things I also remember about it is just how quick the game played i mean I, I felt like i couldn't sometimes couldn't even keep track of which player had the puck even if they're on my own team because yeah. the, they were just gonna be going around everywhere and at, when the puck gets passed the person who takes the puck on your team becomes the player that you're then controlling so right. like your control is bouncing around to like all these different people um so it was a very quick game um, yeah i also got into trouble for icing all the time i'm i'm not sure if that's like if you're like running up and down like you're sliding too much i don't yeah. know i used to always get in trouble for icing i did too i remember uh, that so it got there was, me really annoyed because at the time i didn't know what icing was yeah i still I don't really did know what icing I, was because i'm not I'm not that uh, so we're not could, big sports people, people could send us feedback tell us what icing is it's in hockey someone send us the rules to hockey please yeah, I, we're not gonna look it up no we're not, I, we I assume we it's punching yeah <laughs> on ice the um, uh there was another game that came out that was hockey themed uh that was called mutant league hockey it came out this, in 94 <laughs> now this was our cup of tea <laughs> this was our cup of tea but i didn't get to play it as a child I didn't even know it existed until I was researching NHL 95, which was a sequel to NHL 94. And I believe there might have been an NHL 96. Because I think there was an NHL 96, yeah. Because sports games like to release every single year forever. That's right. The Mutant League hockey came out in 94 and was a spinoff of the Mutant League football game. It was also created by Electronic Arts, which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. probably somebody i think i read a comment where it said it's like one of the few things that electronics arts did right <laughs> um, fair i mean they are they are a, a an evil company you could play as different mutants so there were three different teams the robots the skeletons and trolls which don't really sound like mutants but <laughs> no those aren't mutants. those were the, the three teams and you could do different things in Mutant League Hockey versus NHL 95, such as dropping landmines, bribing the ref, or making the puck explode. And the de uh, hazards were all over the ice as well, such as like thin ice could yep. just be a thing. And holes. And holes. <laughs> and death was commonplace. Also, you didn't get in... I don't believe you got in trouble if you got into fights. And you no, could, no, no, you no. Could also, in the beginning, I was watching somebody play this game. There was two guys squared off to do the pass of the puck to whoever gets... Yep. And you just can beat the other person up <laughs> while you're dropping the puck. You're just <sighs> punching the other guy across the screen. And 
it's just like Beautiful. a game that I was like, I wish that I played as a child. I, I'm probably going to try and figure out how to play it through yeah. like methods and, uh, and, and enjoy some. Uh, it looks, but it looks exactly like NHL '95, except with like skeletons and robots on the. Rink. I just, I just love that there was a division at EA that was like, we're gonna make really serious sports game, and then there was like another division that was like, let's just have fun with it. <laughs> you were probably using the same assets. Oh, 100 percent using the same assets. Well, they probably just like traded the assets over to each other. They, they probably sat next to each other in the same cube, <laughs> like cube cluster. Yeah. <laughs> Just like, hey, can I grab that uh, that asset of uh, Wayne Kretzky? I'm just going to uh, I'm just going to turn him into a skeleton. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much the same game except uh, skinned differently. There, there was a, a, then another uh, game that we had here on our list, which was Tiny Toons Adventures: Acme All Stars, uh, which was a sports game themed on the Tiny Toons Ad- Tiny Toon Adventures television series, which was a fairly popular series that was out. Oh. Um, in the 90s i don't think it actually ran as long as i feel like it ran for i think it only ran for like two years or so but um for those who don't remember the show or never watched it um it was essentially like scaled down versions of the looney tunes they were children's they're they're the looney tune children yeah so to clarify though this wasn't like a muppet baby situation these right. weren't like these weren't like baby bugs bunnies this was like another character who just happens to be a rabbit that is a named, child named Buster. named Buster. Yeah, and um, he goes to school with oh, like... I think they're the kids. Aren't they the kids of the Looney Tunes no. characters? Well, it's never confirmed if they're actually the children of the Looney Tunes characters. <laughs> the Looney Tunes characters teach at their school. Oh, that's right. That's right. <laughs> they're the professors. They're the professors. Who teach them how to be Looney Tunes, because that's apparently a study. Why well, you do. Uh, anyway... Tiny Toons Adventures Acme All-Stars was a Sega Genesis game. Uh, You played five different sports games, basketball, soccer, bowling, obstacle course, and apparently a game that I've never heard of called Montana Hitting, which was just a form of (laughs) whack-a-mole. Yeah. Uh, characters included Buster Bunny, Babs Bunny, Plucky Duck, Hampton J. Pig, Montana Max, Elmira Duff, Shirley the Loon, Fifi La Fume, Calamity Coyote, Little Beeper, Furball, and Dizzy Devil. Which, right. to anyone who's never heard of Tiny Toons Adventures, sounds like a bunch of gibberish that I just made up. <laughs> <laughs> well, Dizzy Devil's like Tasmanian Devil. Yeah. And is, and is related somehow to the Tasmanian Devil, which is the primary Looney Tunes character. And they're, as, and they're all their names sound almost like the yeah, Looney Tunes yeah. character. Yeah, kind of, yeah. You can kind of, I think, do uh, do yeah. uh, some uh, some guessing. Peppy a pew instead of Fifi a few. Yeah. Uh, it's, plucky yeah. duck you know is is um daffy i almost said donald that's a whole different the, IP. it's a whole different intellectual property in any case um i seth's gonna have to correct me but i kind of remember playing this game in the sense that i think we might have rented it once or twice from a local video store i at least remember the I cover our, so maybe i just it. that's might be it our aunt owned it okay i i I remember the cover that's why so and i don't know if i remember the cover because i saw it at the rental store saw it at a recent video game store or we played it (laughs) so the tiny toons adventure acme all-stars was a brand extension of the tiny toons adventure like core game and they actually made a lot of tiny toons themed uh get uh games so they essentially i i feel like what happened is they made the tiny toons adventure uh, the original game and it did well and then they said let's do this again but do something else and so they made sequels they made spin-off properties very similar to what mario did uh and does you know mario has their core games and then they have like mario party mario kart and they just do mario tennis you know they just put mario in different situations because mario is the brand that sells the product so which is what i believe uh, t- what happened with tiny toon adventures they had a successful initial property that then extended into random stuff which is impressive um i i just took a look they had 18 games that were released with that ip for a television series that ran for two years yep (laughs) that's that's a ton of games for two years and in fact when did the television series end 92 yeah this tiny toons acme all-stars came out in 94 yeah it was in syndication until 95 yeah okay 
so it's still on television but yeah. yeah so essentially they took a, they took a brand and they just drove it to as far as they could which some some companies do and you end up with weird stuff like yeah. tiny tunes acme all stars uh, they there's other intellectual properties that do that too and you end up with weird stuff like I was going to say Red Mega Man Soccer? Mega Mega Man Soccer. <laughs> yeah, for the Super Nintendo? That's <laughs> for the that's Super a game. Nintendo. Yeah, there there are games that if you ever wonder why these weird characters are doing something strange, it's probably because they're trying to milk the brand for as much yeah. as they could. It's because they realized strange things makes money. Strange things makes money. No, they realized the brand makes money and that's, that they yeah, can yeah, yeah, yeah. make different stuff with the brand. Instead of making a soccer game, Let's just make it a Tiny Toon soccer game. Well, Seth, we, we've beaten around the bush. Shall we talk about the real reason we're doing this episode? <laughs> That's right. We should. Uh, the The primo spotlight of this episode is a game that both Zach and I are very familiar with, and that game is NBA Jam. Welcome to NBA Jam! <laughs> is it the shoes? Is it the shoes? Uh, NBA Jam. Originally released in 1993 by Midway as an arcade cabinet, um, Seth and I had our experience with NBA Jam playing the Sega Genesis port right. of the of the 1993 um, arcade game, which was published by Acclaim uh, versus yeah. Midway. Published by Acclaim, the the Sega Genesis version. It was a two on two basketball game that featured real basketball players, also real basketball teams, and uh, it had an exaggerated nature of play. So that was kind of the thing that I think drew us to it was never felt like you're playing like a real nba game uh the the ball would sometimes catch on fire if you're doing mm-hmm. really well and it would burn the hoop and when that happened this guy tim kritzow who did all the voices went he's on fire uh <laughs> Listen, the things, shoes. Are, things are heating up <laughs> we could probably splice in some uh oh i'm gonna drop a ton of tim kritzow into this <laughs> into this audio <laughs> perfect uh also you could like break the glass if you if you did a slam dunk uh there was like a way you could charge up your shoes that could make them you run faster turbo mode yeah turbo mode so there's a bunch of cool things that um, can happen also a ton of cheat codes um such as the ability to unlock certain hidden characters such as (laughs) (laughs) president bill clinton (laughs) Uh, and also, you could also unlock uh, Hillary Clinton. That's right. And uh, I think it's a different version. They had multiple NBA jams. So yeah, there the, was like Tournament Edition. Uh, there was like another one that I think came out. Uh, we played this primarily. It was called NBA Jam. That was the one we played. We didn't have Tournament right. Edition. The uh, interesting fact is that random people started coming into the game because they... F- what, so what they did was they used photographs and they brought in the photographs to create the... Uh, essentially the headshots for the team when you select your team you'd have two people on each of the teams so it'd be like chicago bulls and it would show two headshots and you could pick that team or you could go to the la lakers or the uh, boston celtics and stuff like that Uh and you can you would show the two two people's heads and you'd go in and select and then it would go into more of a a drawn style of play and in that in that drawn style play, I think you could then enter your your essentially your code name, which yeah, would be like yeah. your initials, and yep. that that's where you can unlock the secret characters. You can unlock a mascot, or you can unlock Bill Clinton. And that originally came into it because the uh, designers of the game photographed themselves and put themselves into it, right? Yeah, and realized that they could do this and. Uh, essentially the company was like that's kind of funny why don't we do some like why don't we include some secret people in there that right. are like topical and when they went to go to do council release where they went with acclaim as the publisher acclaim is like we have this laundry list of people that you we want you to put into it and so then you, then that's where bill clinton al gore all got into the put into the game and one of the uh there's actually a, a, a fun story with um uh, Gary Payton and Michael Jordan. And so Gary Payton didn't actually make the cut to get into the game. And th- they also had a limited roster, right? Because they're, 
there would only have so many people that could go on the team because it was a two by two. You would only have two people on per team and you could only, I don't even know if you could switch out who was on that team. Um, mm-hmm. But so you'd have a limited number. So Gary Payton didn't make the cut and Michael Jordan actually had pulled himself out of any licensing deals that the NBA could do. Right. So he wasn't, he, they, he couldn't be in the game because he was, he was not allowing any, any of himself to be licensed out through NBA. And since this was an NBA license, they couldn't take Michael Jordan. So one day, what the design, one of the designers of the game got a phone call from a West Coast distributor who said that Gary Payton stopped by and was willing to pay whatever it cost, was, whatever, whatever cost was associated. He wanted to be in the NBA, the arcade cabinet. He wanted to be in the game. And so they told him what he needed to do for the photographs. And he he sent in photographs of himself and Michael Jordan to be put into the game. And so they he, and told, told the designer, hey, we want to be in the game. Hook us up. So they created a special arcade cabinet for Michael Jordan and Gary Payton where they were in the game and they got all-star stats and like ridiculous like stats for the game and they were only in a couple of machines and they they so they there are versions of the game that have Michael Jordan and uh, Gary Payton and I actually was reading as well that Shaq had two cabinets so he had his own <laughs> personal cabinet <laughs> And also he had a cabinet that he brought with him to different games and made players play oh the game. Gosh. Oh, that's um, such a that's, jack move. <laughs> so that's how popular the game was. I mean, it was, it was ridiculously popular. Um, the, I, I, part of the, Zach went into it where it was kind of exaggerated basketball play, but also the, there was no um, very very few rules in right, the game, yeah. so you you wouldn't get fouled out. There were no free throws. There was no there was no violations except if you goaltended or had a twenty four second violation. Yeah, so you were able to just push and shove people because there was no rules for it. So you could, in fact, just stand there like swinging your arms akimbo, just knocking everybody down. Right, and yeah. you weren't going to get pulled on it, uh, which probably taught Zach and I entirely different ways of playing basketball since yeah we probably our, got in trouble at some point <laughs> knowing our knowledge of basketball only stemmed from playing nba jam which came off as not a super serious basketball game but for people who didn't know anything about basketball i mean close as we got to watching basketball that's for sure <laughs> yes um and so the the game is yes. Yeah, Zach says he still plays it today. I uh, yeah. you you playing? I would actually. I went to um, a barcade in Providence, yeah. and uh, they had uh, the they had NBA Jam hooked up on the uh, one of the. They had like a ROM or an emulator, and it oh, was, that's uh, cool. It was tucked up there. Nice. The 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 last time I played the actual Sega game was not probably too long ago. I think when I was testing my my system. But the uh, the last time I played the game with p- other people was I played it at the Retro World Expo down in Hartford. Uh, they had an arcade cabinet there set up, and that's actually where I got to meet Sal Devita, who was one of the um, designers of the game, as well as Tim Kritzow. Uh, Tim, yeah, Kit Zrao. That's how you say his name, I think. Uh, Kim, Tim Kit Zrao, who um, is the voice actor for the game. Um, he's the one that came up with all the a lot of the funny sayings like "Is it the shoes?" and "Boom shakalaka" um, and stuff like that. Uh, Sal actually, Sal Devita um, has kind of a cool history with Midway. He was in a bunch of the Mortal Kombat games as stand-ins for the um, digital characters. Um, so they would take his photograph and costume for certain characters in in Mortal Kombat. Um, which they they used a lot of that same kind of technology with developing of. Uh, NBA Jam, the kind of photorealistic um, art style, was was brought over from the work that they did on Mortal Kombat. Realizing, hey, we can do this with a sports game; and it will probably be pretty good. So, uh, they part. Uh, I was just looking here. So apparently, Godzilla and Bart Simpson were supposed to be in the game, but they were scrapped. <sighs> and I did know there was like the Hornet guys in there, like the mascot. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 
um and it, it does play up to four people simultaneously which is pretty yeah. cool yeah which is why the, it's two by two yeah if you have the um the sega genesis like port extender thing you could do uh, i think four player on the sega genesis itself it only had the system only has two ports but they had like a multi-port uh, adapter you could get to add the extra ports into it um yep. so that's uh who knows someday. and of course the midway uh, the cabinets had the four control yeah, like, they had the, joysticks the, the four four points yeah. similar to like uh x-men arcade cabinets which we're actually um in the future we'll probably do a cabinet uh episode where we talk about uh arcade cabinets for, yeah in regards to like x-men simpsons all those guys since there's uh i think some games that are really only on the arcade cabinets that are uh truly iconic yeah that uh that may not that may not have been ported over to the console which fortunately nba jam was that's right um, I think that's all we got for for NBA Jam for sports games. Like like Seth mentioned early on, we didn't play a ton of sports games, and the ones we did play are the ones that we listed <laughs> or, that's or learned about. I swear I played another sports game. Um, but oh, there is Dunk Lords. We should have mentioned we, Dunk Lords. Before we should mention we, Dunk Lords. We uh, we, we, we briefly depart. talked. We briefly talked about Dunk Lords back back during our PAX episode. We got to talk with and uh, meet the team that was developing dunk lords um which is a 2v2 uh kind of uh kind of exaggerated exaggerated basketball basketball game um very much in the style of nba jam but it also throws in some stuff that that they i can definitely see them getting inspired by uh mutant league hockey and mutant league football in terms of stage hazards and uh kind of other things that you probably wouldn't, wouldn't legally be allowed to do on a basketball court in in fact i feel like if you're like oh i really want to play a nba jam because seth and zach told me how much fun it was i would recommend you picking up dunk lords and yeah. playing that it is on the pc and the x bone yeah which the xbox one or that's right xbox that's, one xbox one yep. and i i don't know i how the next one's coming out is xbox something else yeah i don't, know. I don't have an xbox uh, so it's on the <laughs> xbox it's also on steam yep. and steam actually has a remote play capability i did this i'm not sure it went all right uh i think i my i don't know if my internet was also screwed i have to try it again but you can essentially one person can own the game and can yes, invite yeah three other people to remote play into the game so then you can get uh four people playing on one copy of the game yeah it just does require streaming the game to your friends through the internet so uh, you may have better uh connection issues you may have better smoother gameplay if you all own the game yeah but if you want to have like one person try the game and play a couple of rounds to see if it's worth everybody picking up then check it out um but it was, it, it's probably going to be a game that zach and i put up on the stream uh, absolutely since yeah. it's a yeah. it's a it's a based on the based on what i've played so far and i've played very little of it uh i i it's definitely my jam yeah and we love the we didn't even get we, that <laughs> i just didn't want to acknowledge it we love the dunk lords team they're, they're great people yes. so um we hope they listen to this episode and they enjoy this this shout out <laughs> <laughs> there we go but we won't tell them we did it so it's a That's secret right. be a secret seth do you have anything else to add about um sports uh, games? i think we're good with sports games i think we've we've got as much as we could out of it if you want to yeah i think i think we're all set do you want to tell me about the game that you want to buy or wait or pass on i do <laughs> there is a game it is called... I'd hope so. Uh, so the game that I'm excited about buying, waiting, or passing on is a game called Landlords... Uh, I, wa- I keep wanting to say Supper, but it's Super. Um, I guess Landlord Supper would just be <laughs> a weird... A, that would just a, be a landlord a, having dinner. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you have to cook him dinner. That could well, be a be fun nice. game. That'd yeah. be cute. So uh. it's called Landlord Super. Which is a construction simulation game akin to House Flipper or uh, Thief Simulator. Those type of, uh, I think, drug dealer simulator that just came out. That's yeah. on Steam. So type one of those type of games. Uh, the premise of the game is, is it's a 1980s Britain. And you have to take a dodgy loan out and restore property and move in locals and then help them out with they have grievances 
and then celebrate with a pint. It's, so the game is uh, it's it's what's funny is the game is localized and American <laughs> and British. <laughs> So it has two language localizations, where it is, so it has American uh, slang and it's got also British slang in it. Um, they is a it's first person and a, kind of like a life simulator type game, and you build stuff, you get drunk, and then you build stuff while you get drunk, and you essentially have to work your way up to getting money from people to buy properties and fix them up, but. You're, I don't think you're really intended to fix them up to be beautiful. I think you're just supposed to like fix them so that they're passable. Uh, mm. The game is in early access, and the early access will be uh, has it's been available to play in early access since uh, the, th- the since the thirtieth. Oh, cool! Which was this last Thursday. So that yeah, so check it out. I would. I would give you more information, but because of time being a linear fashion and the way that we record, I is not the thirtieth. For I me. I just need uh what but it's are you planning to get it? For you. Yeah. Um I'm gonna put it down <laughs> as a wait. Okay, there <laughs> like, we go. <laughs> I, I wanna see uh I wanna see how much the I was gonna tell them like how much it was cost and stuff like that, since it's an early access and it's available for them, but it's not available for me because time is weird. But so I'm going to put it down as weight. I'm going to okay. see how much it costs and kind of like what I'm what I'm up to. I do have all the Broken Sword series that I have to play through. So I am busy in regards yeah, to my, yeah. my video game time. So but it does look like a hilarious game. And who doesn't like like uh, British humor? Yeah, cool. So, uh, Zach, what are you excited about buying, waiting or passing on? So the game that I, I chose for this by weight pass is called Scourge Bringer. It's a fast paced, free moving rogue light platformer. Um, you play as a girl named Kyra, uh, Kira, Kira, to uh, and you explore the unknown and slash your way through ancient machines, guarding uh, the seal of her past and maybe the redemption of humanity. That's the description on Steam. Um, it looks to be a a fast paced. Um, Kind of retro, I don't want to say 8-bit because it's definitely better graphics than what 8-bit was able to do back in the day, but um, definitely retro style um, graphics, pixel art style graphics. Um, Very fast paced. It kind of reminds me a bit of the style of game of like uh, Towerfall a bit, not in the sense that Towerfall was really a platform, like an adventure. It was a, Towerfall's a essentially a fighting game but in the same kind of like fast-paced uh gameplay that towerfall had um it looks cool it, it, it gives me some vibes of like metroid and stuff like that and some of the, the the pictures i also really just like the art style um in terms of the the color that they use for the game um it's currently in early access um i think i might wait a bit until it gets a full release uh, before I plan to do anything, but it does look very neat. So it's it's definitely on a wait, but I think it's going to be on a, a soft wait. I think I might end up picking it up, um, but I think I will wait on it for the time being. Nice. I I'll have to I'll have to look at it and check it out. Yeah. Um. So yeah. So that's our sports episode. It was very sportsy. Yeah, we talked a lot about Tiny Tunes. <laughs> yeah, Tiny Tunes and NBA Jam. And NBA Jam. The, the two yeah, sports that we know. The two sports that are that all people need just just know. Uh, so, do you want to uh, let people know if how they want to be able to uh, reach out to us to support us and how to listen to us? Yeah, if people want to reach out to us and support us and listen to us, there's a bunch of things that you can do. Let's take a look at them. So, first, you can go to our website www.classicgamingbrothers.com. If you want to contact us from our website, we actually have, it's really cool, we have a contact page. Mm. The contact page, however, is identical to sending us an email at classicgamingbrothers at gmail.com because it all ends up in the same place. It if does, you send the us trash. An, <laughs> that's the garbage. <laughs> no, no. No, no, no. We, we read, respond to everything. We, we do, yeah, we literally do read, respond to every email that we get, which makes it sound like we get a ton of emails. <laughs> but please send us emails. And by we respond to everything, 
Seth responds to everything. Yes, Seth responds to everything, and Zach hears about it later. So you can send us an email at the classic gaming brothers at gmail.com. You can also go to our Facebook page, our Twitter page, our Instagram page, and you can send us messages there as well. You can like and follow us there. Um, you can share our posts. That'd be great. That's a great way to support us to share things we post, like our posts, comment on our posts. We love interaction. We love hearing from people. We want to hear what people have to say. Um, so please do all those things. Uh, Seth and I maintain uh, the social media, so anything gets sent to us, we will we will take a look at. Uh, we have a fan who likes to tag us in stories when he's listening to our episodes, which you mm-hmm. we love. Um, so you know, do that. That's great. <laughs> you know, um, what else? What else can people do? They can follow us on Twitch. They can watch our Twitch streams that we do. Yep. Um, if you follow us on Twitch, you'll be alerted whenever we go live. You can sure. check us out on YouTube. That's where we upload all of our Twitch streams when Seth remembers to do so. Most it's also them, where yes. most of our episodes are for our podcast. I don't know if we're completely up to date on that, are we? Um, as of as of I, this recording? As of this recording, I believe we are mostly up to date. I need to put up our our um, indie dev. I don't know if I'm putting our indie dev lounge up there. Eh, we'll figure that out. Yeah, but our our core podcast is uh, uploaded there every episode. Yeah, uh, so our Sunday episodes are up there. Um, I I sometimes I like to leave content for our podcast, like our podcast yeah. subscribers in the podcast subscribing stream versus putting it into our YouTube stream. Um, we, which is fine. Like I, and I think I might do that with our indie dev lounge. Yeah. And eventually migrated over, but there is some benefit to listening to it through our podcast listening app yeah. versus our YouTube. But all of our content is free, and we we won't put our stuff behind a paywall. That's right. And speaking of listening to our episodes, you can do it on pretty much every podcasting app known to man. If If we're not on something, which there's a chance that we're not on something, let us know and we'll get on it. Uh, we recently ended up on Acast, which is a new podcasting application that I've never heard of. Seth told me yeah. about it in the episode that we talked about it last time. Sure, um, we're on but it now. We're on Acast. We're on Castbox. Um, we're on Stitcher. We're on Spotify. We're on um, iHeartRadio, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're on we're tons of stuff. Like the only thing we're not on is the NPR Go- official podcasting uh, application. <laughs> Google, <laughs> I- iTunes, iTunes, uh, uh, you name it, we're, we're probably there. If you don't like listening to us on one service, you can listen to us on another service. But yeah. if you, I mean, if you don't like listening to us, then I mean, why you are you just, listening at this point? You could just, yeah. I mean, you're very far into this episode. <laughs> you can also support us. We, we, like Seth said, we like to give out our content for free, so all of our stuff is free. However, we do have a store page. Um, at that store page, you can buy our T-shirt. Um, with that, which has our logo on it that was designed by our uh, very talented artist friend. And you can also buy our mug, which has the same logo on it by our very talented artist friend. Yes. Um, and uh, that's a great way to support us as well. Um, yep. We will be refreshing the store with some new t-shirts. Right. Soon. Um, I think we're, Ish. we might be, yeah, I think we're updating some of the soon eventually so, yeah. at, at some it's, point it's, it's not around. a priority it's not a priority yeah. for us um we we have the store because uh people liked some of the merch that we we got for ourselves and we decided to do that so right. anyway it's also a great avenue for us to get our own merch <laughs> that's true it's true it's a, a very easy avenue in any case those are the ways that you can reach out to us contact us and support us and like subscribe ring bells do anything that you do to get the attention yep. share tell three friends tell three friends and make sure to only tell three friends anyway besides that seth don't play games like my brother and don't play games like my brother i've been seth <laughs> and i've been Zach. <laughs> and we've been the classic gaming brothers is it the shoes <laughs> oh i don't know what does he say boom shakalaka, boom shakalaka. <laughs> he's on fire things are heating up <laughs> So it's just this is just the NBA Jam episode that's secretly the sports episode. <laughs> <laughs>